Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's begin our talk by praising the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, cherisher and nourisher of this universe, the one that has made it possible for us to witness an additional day in our lives. At the same time, let's not forget to send abundant peace and salutations upon our noble master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we analyze our lives, we'll find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed many favors, bounties and blessings in our lives. Amongst these blessings are our organs, our body parts, the ability to talk, the ability to articulate ourselves and communicate with others, the ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to feel, the ability to walk. All these are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon human beings. And this is why the Almighty Allah calls upon us on numerous places in the Holy Quran to reflect on our own creation. The Almighty Allah states in Surah Al-Dariyat, وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبَصِرُونَ why don't you reflect on how you have been structured and proportioned, human beings? Look at how you have been created and look at other creatures around you. Doesn't this bring about a realization in your life that there is a magnificent being behind this creation? And in Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah is the one that have made you come out of the wombs of your mothers and he has made for you your vision, your hearing, and your perception, so that you can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same verse is repeated in Surah As-Sajdah. وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةَ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ That Allah is the one that has given you your ability to see, your ability to hear, and your ability to perceive. But little do you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same message is repeated towards the end of Surah Ghafir. سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ Al-Ayah, Allah says, we will show them our signs in the horizon and on their own organs. Until it becomes distinct for them that this Quran is the true book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now looking at how we have been proportioned and structured today, we would like to reflect on one significant organ on our body. This organ has got a great impact on our mental well-being and on the mental well-being of those around us. And this is the tongue. Subhanallah, if you look at the size of the tongue, you'll be astonished. Study has proven that the average size of the tongue is between 7.9 centimeters to 8.3 centimeters. But when you look at the impact of this tongue, the influence that the tongue have on our perception, on our psychology, on how we think and feel and deal with people, it's mind boggling. And this is why some of our scholars, Muslim scholars, have described the tongue and they've said, Al Lisan, Jirmuhu Sagir, wa Jurmuhu Kabir that the physical size of the tongue is insignificant, is minute and trivial, but its crimes are beyond limits, are, its crimes are huge. Just think about how many relationships have been jeopardized today 
because of the utterances in that relationship. How many people have deserted one another and they don't see eye to eye families because of a statement that was spoken? One statement has a potential of bringing people together or dividing people or distancing people away from you. And for us Muslims, when we utter our statements, we should always have the consciousness in our mind that our utterances are recorded and will be presented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our utterances are not going in vain. Every utterance, it's recorded as Allah says, مَا يَنْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Whatever human being utters, it's raqib, it's monitored, عَتِيد, it is documented. Just think about it. When you enter into a Zoom meeting or a Zoom discussion and you see that notification that this conversation is recorded, you are mindful of your statements. Do we do the same when we are about to utter words to someone or when we are about to slander someone or when we are about to ridicule and attack someone? And just think about it. The, how many words do we utter on a daily basis? Study shows that on average, a woman speaks, utters approximately 20,000 words per day. And a man utters about 7,000 words a day. And my whole purpose of sharing this is not to justify that women are more talkative than men. No because it differs from person to person. Sometimes you find a man that is more talkative than a woman. And this is why this study is academically debated. But the whole purpose is for us to reflect on the amount of words that we utter on a daily basis. All these words that we utter when we're talking to our family members, when we're talking to our parents, when we're talking to our colleagues, do we utter these words to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? Because when you have this consciousness within you, you have the concept that my Allah is watching me and the angels are recording my utterances. You'll be extra cautious when you're dealing with people, when you're communicating with others. You will not dare to criticize people uh, without justification. You will not slander and backbite others. You will not cause friction and bickering between people. And this is why it's imperative and very important for us Muslims to develop this consciousness of controlling our words and controlling ourselves before we communicate with others. It doesn't matter how upset we are or how disappointed or how emotional we are, but it is our religious duty to have this discipline embedded and indoctrinated in our minds. And let me share some strategies that will help us, inshallah, develop these skills and these qualities in our lives. Number one, if you want to control your words and you want to control your statements, the first and initial step towards this achievement is never ever utter words to demoralize or to bring someone down. Never demoralize a person or trivialize them or bring them down. Because there are some people out there, they've become like wild and vicious animals. All they do is wait for a mistake of a person and bang, there they go and put those people down. No. Never ever demoralize a person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in numerous places in the Holy Quran. Say polite words to people. And you will see the word used in this ayah is an nas. Allah does not say be polite to the believers. No. Believers and non believers. Allah says, be polite to people. Say words that are 
pleasing and appealing to others, believers and non-believers, believers and non-believers, we should equally be polite to them, people that coexist with us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well says to Musa and Harun, alayhim as -salam, when Allah sent Musa and Harun to go and approach Fir'aun, the arch enemy of Islam, Allah did not say to these two messengers that become hostile when you are talking to Fir'aun. No, no. And this is a man that claimed to be a deity, claimed to be God. Allah says, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Be polite. قُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَا Choose your words polite and uh, soothing words when you are talking to Fir'aun. Today we talk to a fellow Muslim and you become so hostile. Children talk to their parents. And they talk to them in a very nasty tone. La ilaha illallah. When are we going to change? So step number one, don't ever demoralize any person. Secondly, never ever speak in a state of anger. If you are angry, calm yourself down. When you have diffused your anger, this is the time that you can communicate. And we'll learn this from the Holy Quran. Musa alayhi salam, comes back from Mount Thor with the tablets. He has received the scripture, the Torah. And he comes back and finds that the Banu Israel, the Israelites, have uh, initiated the worship of the calf. What Musa a.s. does, he becomes furious and angry. Yes, he goes to his brother Harun and he holds him accountable, but he does not confront the Banu Israel yet. Allah says, Musa السلام, waited to calm himself down when he diffused his anger. He went and picked up those tablets that he had thrown out of anger and he went to his people and continued with his mission. So never ever speak in a state of anger. And this is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the narration of Bukhari and Muslim, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw li yasmut. Whoever believes in the oneness, in the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believes that he will be resurrected on judgment day and he will be summoned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let him say, fal yaqul khayran, let him utter words that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to, to people around him, or else let him remain silent. Or else let him be silent. So silence is the key to solving many issues. And this is why one of the poets says that ما إن ندمت على سكوتي مرة ولقد ندمت على كلامي مرارا that I have never ever that I have never ever regretted over my silence on matters when they arose. But many a times I've regretted when I spoke irresponsibly. SubhanAllah, there's a story of a woman that suffered in her relationship. She had a lot of misunderstandings and bickerings and fights with her husband. And she believed that there was magic spells done on her. So she went to a sheikh and told the sheikh that, sheikh, it looks like there is, there is witchcraft that is done on her. Maybe I'm possessed. There's something happening to our relationship. Save my marriage. Do something. And she thought the sheikh would perform ruqya on her. So the sheikh understood that this is a psychological problem. There is personality problem in these individuals. So he quickly went inside his room. And he comes back with... Uh, you know, a piece of paper that was wrapped up, it was folded. And then he says to her, that take this piece of paper with a condition that you do not open and read the context of this paper. Whenever your husband fights with you or he argues with you, take it and bite it. 
but it. And when he comes down, take it away. Do this for a few weeks and come back to me. And this lady was happy that the sheikh had, has, you know, had given her something and this will work out. So she practices, she complies on the advice of the sheikh. And after a few weeks, she goes back to the sheikh and says, Sheikh, whatever you have done on this paper, it has worked out. I complied with your advice and we never ever fought. We managed to control our situation. So the sheikh goes to her and says, I want you to open that paper in front of me. So she opens up the paper in front of the sheikh. And then she was amazed that the paper was blank. So the sheikh said that there was nothing, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you or with your marriage. You, the, and the sheikh says that there is nothing spiritually. And the sheikh says that don't think that you are possessed or there is magical spells done on you. There is a problem in your personality. You need to go and sort your things out. Control your words and control your anger. And this is the key to the success of your marriage. SubhanAllah. So let's learn to control our words. Never utter words in a state of anger. Thirdly and finally, when you're about to upset someone, when you're about to attack on someone, when you're about to become vicious, to jeopardize the relationship, or to distance someone away from you who could potentially come at your rescue one day, know that at that time you could be earning the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our utterances can either please Allah or displease him. And this is why one day Aisha radiallahu anha utters demoralizing words against one of her co-wives, Sophia. And she says to the Messenger وسلم, that Hasbuk min Safiya kada wa kada. She says that look at your wife Safiya. She's just too small. She's a small lady. And the Prophet وسلم, looks at Aisha and says, Ya Aisha, Aisha, regardless of your position, you are the daughter of Abu Bakr and the Siddiq. There are verses revealed in praises of you, Aisha. But these statements that you have uttered, لَقَدْ كُلْتِ كَرِيمًا This statement that you have uttered now, لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحْرِ لَمَا زَجَتْ If these words were put in the oceans of the universe, they have a potential of contaminating all these waters. SubhanAllah. One word can either make or break. We should choose what we want to get out of our utterances. Mu'ad radiallahu an goes to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, give me an advice, O messenger of Allah. And then the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes out his tongue, blessed tongue, and he says, amsik alayka hadha. Hold this control, this Mu'ad. And then Mu'ad says, wa inna mu'akhaduna bima naqul ya Rasulallah, messenger of Allah, do you want to tell me that we are going to be held responsible for our utterances on Judgment Day. And the Messenger of says, ثَقَلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَا Mu'ad." Oh, Mu'ad, I thought you were an intelligent person. Don't you know? فَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ عَلَى وُجُوهِهِمْ إِلَّا أَصَائِدِ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ Don't you know, Mu'ad, that people will be dragged on their faces on Judgment Day, dragged to hellfire? because of the utterances. Subhanallah. Our utterances can either take us to Jannah or take us to Jahannam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says once again, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمُ بِكَلِمَةً مِنْ رِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالَ يَرْفَعُ اللَّهُ بِهَا الدَّرَجَاتِ That at times an individual will utter words that are pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and pleasing to others. When you make people happy, it makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. And by uttering this, he is not aware that his levels and ranks in Jannah are being elevated. And on the contrary, the Messenger says, وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَكَلَّمْ بِكَلِمًا مِنْ سَخَطِ اللَّهِ 
that a human being, a person, an individual, would utter words which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not cognitive and mindful of his utterances. Through those statements, he will be casted in hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from hellfire and make us from the dwellers of Jannah. I plead and implore to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who control the tongues at the times of anger or at times of excitement. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.